Welcome back YouTube. Um, what I'm doing today, sitting out here trying to rig up some of my brim busters. I got one or two brim busters that the tip <clears throat> broke off of. So what I'm doing, while well, I got time and rivers high, work on some of these brim busters and rig them up. But ones that's got the tip broke off I'm going to take a hook I wish I had a longer shank than this but for the, this size eye I didn't want too thick of a hook but uh, wish I wish the shank was a little bit longer anyhow I took one of these hooks and right before it gets to where it bends I take the wire cutters and I'll cut the hook off Right, right when it, where it'll be straight. Uh, it's easier if you got a longer shank hook. I couldn't find none of my tackle box with the longer shank for the size I needed. I got catfish hooks with long shanks, but anyhow, this is what I'm gonna use, and I cut the shank off before it got to where it bends at, where it'd be straight. And on this particular brim buster, it's called a had this one for a while called a honey stick 10 foot and this is one of the brim busters they don't have a real thin end on them so I like to use these for a lead line a straight line or something sometime when I need to, to reach out and the fish ain't down real deep in the holes during the winter or jigging I, I don't like to use too limber of an end pole for jigging uh, um, but what I did I cut the hook and this is when I started to make up cut the hook and fixed it where the eyes at the very tip then I wrapped it with thread but I'm gonna leave this little part exposed for right now and I'm gonna take some super glue or crazy glue and put here and at the very tip right there before it gets to the end where it'll be connected to, to the end of the uh, rod and I'm gonna let it dry then I'm gonna come back and I'll wrap it with a little bit more um, wrap it back down here with some more thread to where it will be uh, cover up that hump on there where the line won't be getting caught on it when I'm fishing Anyhow, we can work on these a little bit and uh, kind of show you a couple of different ways I rig mine. All right, what I did now, let's let the uh, glue dry, crazy glue. It's tied a little bit more thread on here. And I'm gonna wrap it a little bit more. Try to work my way down near that shank of the, where I cut off the hook at, where I got it on there. Don't necessarily have to, which if I'm going to tie straight on to the end of the I'm buster I really ain't got to do this that little part that hook sticking up back there would keep my fishing line from coming across it and going to the eye and it ain't got to look perfect just through that eye holes just wrap it kind of tight I'll have to excuse my thumb, I know it don't look good, but it's hard to mess with this string with a band-aid or something on. I messed that thumb up six months ago, changing lawnmower blades, 
Well, I messed it up years ago on a job. And since then, if I bruise it, it's easy to bruise. Now what I'm going to do is go ahead and cut this. And i get one more knot in there. You ain't got to be too particular about it, just so you got something on there that stick that you put. The, I'm going to go over it with glue one more time. Okay. Now I'm going to put me a little more glue on there, but the glue already got you to hold it. And that eye there is stuck. That's a eye right off of a um, hook from a bass hook, worm hook. I'm going to go over it with some, just a few drops of glue again, where, where that line there won't come loose, and then I can rig this one up. Alright, what I'm going to do now, got a different brim buster here. It's got kind of the thick end on the uh, end. It's not real limber. Real thin like a, um, like a lot of your little jewels are. But I'm just run the line through the um, eye. Now sometimes on these eyes here you can either tie back here. I do that a lot of times on one if I'm a fish with a cork or a popper, a lot of time I just tie it back here. But these thicker brim busters with the stiffer ends, I like to tie a little different because I like to do my uh, jig fishing or lead lining, straight lining, whatever you want to call it. But anyhow, I'm going to run this through the eye. And on a lot of these brim busters, have some eyes here on these little pins that you can wrap your line up on. Go through the back eye. Get me a plenty of line off of there where I'd run it through. Got a messed up thumbnail, it's hard to hold on to anything. Keep it right, but what I'm gonna do now, catch the lines here, make me a loop, and get myself plenty of room. That's why I want plenty of line, because this could get agitating here. Start to wrap it. One. six of them. Now I'm going to turn it loose. Just pull on one in. I ain't want to get it all the way tight yet. Now what I'm going to do is grab a hold of my main line and pull. Let it run back to the eye. Make sure that's tight. Pull on your tag end of your line. Make sure it's tight where it won't slip. Now, just cut the piece of the tag line off. I'll leave a little bit of the tag line on there sometime just in case it slips a little. It ain't gonna bother me. Now, show 
what I do next. Alright, what I'm going to do now, got it tied off here, and I'm ran through the eye up here. I'm going to start extending my brum buster so that it starts pulling line off the spool. Go to the next one. Pull it out. I'm going to pull in it, pull the line off the spool. Okay. Now that I've got that, so I know I've got it. A little bit beyond where my brim buster is. Bring it back. Catch it about where it was at. Get the length of the brim buster if I can get a hold of this line. I'm gonna start to wrap it on here. And I'm gonna do about wrap it about three times. Or four, however many times you want to wrap it. Cut that. So now, got that done. Then I can put. Then I can put my uh, hook on here with my lid. Go ahead and do that. Okay. Now this is just me. But a lot of times, if I'm the fish with a jig, jig in the bottom for, for crappy something I'll put me a small bullet weight on and I'll tie my jig head Make myself a little room here a little bit of extra line Come on now. Fold it back through and I catch it with my teeth. And pull. I don't know the name of that knot, but I've been using that for years. It's a good knot. bullet weight on there above my jig head. Now, a lot of times most people just use a jig head and put the jig on there. But I'm going to show you in a minute the reason I put a piece of lead just above mine. I'm going to come like an inch and a half, maybe two inches above. Put a split shot. Now this is just a color I just threw on there. Just for the sake of making the video. Tide water and that river down there where I fish is very snaggy along them banks, and that's where the fish get at along them snags. A lot of times, when you're using just this jig head when you're jigging up and down on that bottom, a lot of times, them limbs and stuff is gonna get caught on. Here, get snag onto a limb. Well, you got a little bit bigger piece of lead up above it, and 
you're bouncing it up and down as long as you don't pull it into that snag or that log too hard or that root you can take this other piece of lead and if it's off the bottom just a little bit it will work up and down to it will work that jig head back loose as long as you don't pull it too tight and hang it too good but it get hung limb or something above just let it drop down a lot of time that heavier piece of lead will snatch that them but this jig is still gonna fish up and down as you dropping that lead ahead of it but if the water's calm I just use the jig head but that's just me but different places and different bodies of water you're fishing will be different a lot of people just use the jig head like I say with the grub there but sometimes not all the time if I'm in kind of moving water or up in the eddy and the water's kind of swirling and I know the fish up in there I'll put a piece of lead above it anyhow I wound my line earlier I wound it up on the, from the bottom side somehow but all you got to do is unwound it unwind it the right way but what I'm going to do now I'm going to go ahead and I'm getting ready to go fishing. Go ahead and unloop it from around these pins. Get it extended out. <clears throat> I say, if I want to jig two foot deep, behind a bonnet bed or something, I can jig two foot deep. If the fish is down deeper, all I got to do is catch my line. Let out a foot or two, I can fish three and a half foot deep. Down to four foot deep. Right on down, I can get the eight or ten foot long as the pole is, and I got extra line if I need more to go even deeper. Now, <clears throat> if I pop the line, I still got extra line on here instead of having to reline it every time. Put my line on, I can just let some extra line out and tie me another jig on and keep fishing. When I get ready to go, just wind my line back on my pole. So, keep pulling it in. Got it at the right length, you hook your hook right back under. And you're ready to go fishing the next time. Now, I'm going to go ahead and work on the little jewel, show you how to do it. YouTube, I may have told you earlier, but with these type of eyes here, a lot of people tie straight into that eye. I've done it before also. A lot of times I'll come back and tie mine behind this eye if I ain't go put it down like I did earlier, wrapping it around back on the line holder on here. But I have bought these rods here and been fixing them up and the whole eye just slide right off, the whole piece there. So a lot of times I'll still yet take a little bit of glue and dab at the very beginning right there where the um, eye casing meets the uh, rod part or the cane part whatever you want to call it but always make sure that that's on there good if you're going to tie straight on to the eye or behind behind here to uh with your line if you could do it that way so i'd mention that all right i'll just loop this one through the eye I'm going to just start tying it straight on. Get 
to loop it on one side and I'm wanting to come back around the other side. These little banding mosquitoes are starting to bite you late in the evening. Little, little small black mosquitoes, what I call banding mosquitoes. Gallon nipples, you can hear them things coming before they bite you. Them little small black ones, they'll land on you biting you never know they're there. You got them gallon nipples out there at the hunting club right now. Well, I like to allow myself plenty of line because I have a time catching a hold of this thing. Now I'm on the hole. To it and pull. Get it down to right there where I'm wanting it at. Up against here, good. All right. Whatever kind of knot, knot you know to make best on the end of one of these things, you two. Go ahead and get that cut. All right. Go ahead and extend this out. Pull it off the spool here while I'm going. to get mine probably about a foot behind the length of the brim buster and I'll cut it there alright I went about eight inches below the brim buster with the line with the brim buster extended all the way out and go ahead and run this through the cork Run my line through there. Bring the toothpick in. Got a certain distance I like to put my toothpick in there because I like that cork to stand up when I throw it and it's sitting on the water. And a lot of time I use a number four gold eagle claw hook is what I like to use for brim fishing. A lot of people use number six. It's different people have different preferences. Mm -hmm. no, 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 no. The hardest part right here is you got a little line back through there. Catch with my teeth. Without hooking myself in the lip like a fish. Now, come up just above it. Open up this BB shot. Now, come above it. About an inch or so with my BB shot. Where right when I put my cricket and my worm on there, 
then everything will be hooked up and ready. Come here. That's how I do my brim poles for fishing with a cork. Instead of running them down the pole like I did the jigger pole, or for fishing the jigger like I did the bigger brim buster, I'll um, tie it to the end like that, like I did this little jewel. Okay, well, so there you go. A lot of people, some will fish foot deep. A lot of time I fish between foot and a half to two foot deep. Give it a throw out there. If I don't hang up under a tree, like I've already did, working with it right up under a treetop here. But that's how I like to rig my, for fishing with the cork or the popper. Either one of them, that's how I like to rig my own pole. And I done caught a leaf and a tree over my head. And how when you get ready to get finished fishing, just let it in. it up around the eyelets. Boy, was that hook sharp. Yeah, you get them stretch a little bit sometime. And people hook that eye or hook right there. There you go. That's two of them fixed up. One for... Uh, Fishing the jig for crappy and stuff, fishing down deep. And the glue, I fixed the eye, about dried on that one. If I need to, I can always take a fingernail file or something of it and smooth that off. But uh, anyhow, that's for the ones that hadn't on. Um, Maybe new to fishing or something. Just getting into fishing, rigging up a pole and starting to fish. That's just a couple of ways I rig mine up. A lot of people do them different. I know I'll get comments saying do it this way, do it that way. But that's just the way I do mine. And I mean, how you know how the best way to do it, but for the new fisherman or something that had, just getting into fishing using a cane pole or something. That's just a few simple ways there to do it and and be ready to go fishing. And anyhow, I hope you enjoy. Enjoy y'all watching the videos and stuff. And till the next time, keep your powder dry and your lines wet. <laughs>